Yeah, Elmo's doing it for the vine. Do it for the vine. I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> My name is Lovey Ajayi, and I'm a writer, a digital strategist, and a lover of technology. Online, I am a pop culture prima donna. I am a wacky wordsmith, bodacious blogger, dynamic digerati with a superior shoe game. I love shoes. But um, overall, what it comes down to is I'm the person saying what you want to say, but you're afraid to say it. And I say it in a funny way. And I'm represented by a cartoon because I'm goofy in real life and cartoons are awesome. So my blog, awesomelylovey.com, is where you go to catch up on all the weird things happen in pop culture. You get side eyes like Jermaine Jackson's hair, which no one can figure out what it is. <laughs> and I recap shows like Scandal and Real Housewives of Atlanta and anything else that's just ridiculous in pop culture. It's fun. And I love the fact that people email me and tell me things like, I've been depressed for months and your blog is where I come to smile and it's where I come to laugh or when I was waiting with my mom in the waiting room when she was dealing with cancer I'd be reading your blog to keep me from crying that is the power of again social media is the fact that while you're doing what you feel like doing you are possibly inspiring somebody else in some way so excited about doing that and it's my privilege so here is the story um, when I was nine, my family and I moved from Nigeria to the United States. And we basically started from scratch and we lost touch with a lot of people. Then in 2007, I got a me message on Facebook uh, from someone I've been friends with since I was three. She was back in Nigeria. We had lost touch for about 17 years. And she found me on Facebook. And I think that's when I really started understanding the power of social media as a great connector. So since then, and possibly earlier, I've been using the web to speak about what, what I believe in, talk about what I love, and just connect with people around the world. Um, and I've been blogging for 11 years. That has taken me places I never thought I'd be. It's knocked down doors I didn't even know existed, let alone could open myself. And it's all because social media really just expands your life, it expands your network, and expands your possibilities. So my college degree is in psychology. I was supposed to be a counselor in psych, um, but I'm in this space now and it's an amazing place to be in. In 2009, my friend and I, Karen Watkins, uh, started the Red Prompt Project. And we started as a social media campaign to get women to put on red shoes on March 10th, which is National Women and Girls. HIV and AIDS Awareness Day. Fast forward five years later, we are getting women from all over the world to speak out about how they've been affected by this huge epidemic. And we're getting women to stand with other women and say, we're with you. There's no stigma because we are all together in this, in this fight. And it's all because of how social media makes our world bigger and smaller at the same time. So we get to share our stories. We get to inspire people. We get to befriend people we've never even met. And that's the power of the web and the power of digital tools like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. So for me, it's been a humbling experience to be able to actually take what I do, which is really to make people laugh and think critically and do it on a larger scale. And I think it's been probably one of the most beautiful surprises. Um, and also to know that you, you're possibly one tweet away from your dream job or one tweet away from meeting your favorite celebrity or one tweet away from actually saving someone's life. It's a powerful thing. So yeah, social media rocks. How people use social media best is when they're being authentically them and when they are speaking in their true voice. Because I think Anything you do, you have to kind of stand in your truth. So the best thing you can do when you are online is to stand in your truth. Um, 
another thing to do is to listen because there's so much noise online and we're all fighting for attention that sometimes we should stop and listen and just see what everyone else is talking about. Um, third tip would be to brand yourself. So br the word brand has been overused, I think, but honestly, it comes down to what people say about you when you're not in the room. So you want to create a brand that people strongly connect to, um, that speaks to somebody on a deeper level, and one that is authentically you. So once again, it goes back to my original point of being authentic, because magical things can happen when you are just being you. Um, four, don't say anything you wouldn't say in a crowded room on social media. <laughs> like if you won't walk into a conference room and yell it out, you should probably not say it on Twitter. Um, keyboard courage is real. And I think people are very, very quick to say really offensive things to other people or just say really, really wrong things. So I always say, if you're not gonna say it in the crowd of the room, don't say it. Or if you don't want it to appear on a giant billboard in Times Square with your name next to it, you should probably not tweet it. And five, um, whatever it is that you wanna do, use social media to get you closer. So it could mean start a blog that shows you're an industry expert. It could mean tweeting tips about whatever it is that you do. It could mean being a resource to people. I just think everyone can find some greater value in social media besides loitering. <laughs>